It's defined as the ability to switch between languages in a single conversation. It's called code switching, and we all do it to some degree. For instance, you may speak more casually at home than you do at work, but for black people, code switching is far more complex. Some would argue the ability to do it well is a prerequisite for a certain level of success. To make some money here, use your white boys. Code switching is something many black people are all too familiar with. Hey, Mr. Kramer, this is Langston from Regal View. As soon as we hear someone speak, our minds automatically make associations about where they're from geographically. We also make assumptions about their education level, their income level. Miles Durkee has done extensive research on racial code switching as an assistant professor at the University of Michigan. Code switching, I describe it as a double-edged sword where there's definitely there's benefits and advantages, but there are also serious costs and consequences. For example, when a black person doesn't or can't effectively code code switch, the result can be damaging. Case in point, the star witness in the 2013 George Zimmerman trial. I had told you. Rachel Jean Tell was on the phone with Trayvon Martin moments before he was killed. I had asked him how the man looked like. He looked like a creepy cracker. When she spoke in court, it was clear the 19-year-old's testimony was largely being judged on her mannerisms and style of speaking. Ultimately, George Zimmerman walked free. They have even said, you know, that it's a survival technique, you know, yes. and maybe it's, it's saved their lives in some situations. Interacting with the police is a clear example where code switching can be the difference between life or death. If an officer already perceives a black male as threatening, I mean, code switching is an extremely effective way to help alleviate some of that anxiety. But code switching is not just in the way a person speaks. It can also involve your entire behavioral profile, from hairstyles to clothing and the way in which you carry yourself. Former President Barack Obama's effective ability to code switch has been well documented. And you go through a whole game. When he was meeting the um, dream team, and you can see his handshake differs simply based on the race of who he's, you know, a uh, greeting. Uh, so you see with uh, white individuals in the coaching staff, it's a very standard, you know, American handshake. But when it's uh, black players on the team, he's more like dapping it up with the players. For many black people, though, constantly focusing on changing themselves in order to make white people feel comfortable can be exhausting and unhealthy. Those who tend to code switch more frequently also report significantly more workplace fatigue and burnout from their current positions simply because they have to be a different person and mask all the cultural assets that they probably value and appreciate internally, but they realize that those same traits aren't valued in their workplace. And while it can be exhausting, Omari Keels wouldn't go so far as to call it inauthentic because he says it's such a huge part of the Black American experience. I don't see it as a burden anymore. I just see it as something that is a part of who I am, a part of how I navigate this world. You're aware that this is Shawnice Battle says she didn't always know what it was called, but first noticed code switching at a very young Young age. I just know when my mom spoke to certain people, she did it. And when my friends in school spoke to certain people, they did it. I just thought it was a part of being an adult, not like this thing that was specific to my race. Do you feel that it is an authentic part of you or that you're not being authentic when you use that voice? So I think that that is definitely um, a question that I've grappled with and thought about for a really long time. Um, because it, it, especially when I initially found out what it was, I'm like, oh my God, this is not me. I'm just switching because I'm in this environment and I'm using this completely different voice and this is not who I am at all. Also, for the person whose code switching is always activated, it still sometimes isn't enough to overcome racism. So what can we do, especially in the workplace, to make sure marginalized groups can be their authentic self? We also need representation all the way up hierarchical um, ladder of leadership in the organization as well where individuals from underrepresented backgrounds can start to have a voice to start to dictate what that corporate culture looks like.